means care is for women, for the vulnerable. Blasphemy is not harmless. Well, the Pharisees were pretty upset. Sometimes you gotta stir up the water. They're martyrs with a persecution complex. I want to kill him. Do you want to be healed? <laughs> I have something that's open to all people. Get up and walk. If he was supposed to be healed, God would have done it himself. That's an interesting point. Your fame is spreading. The good kind. You have certainly livened things up around here. Word travels fast. All right, where's all the Jesus-loving people in the house? Welcome, welcome, welcome. If we haven't met each other before, my name is Scott, and I get to work for the senior pastor of this church, and his name is? Jesus! Uh, we are a Jesus church. If anybody asks you what kind of church are you going to, tell them it's a Jesus church. We study Jesus. In fact, we're in a special series called The Chosen Volume 2, focusing our attention on stories about Jesus and the stories that are available by video. Some people are new to The Chosen, and we want to introduce you to these dramatic stories. There's a way to connect in the weekly and online on the events page. You can find how to connect with this series. Last week, we talked about how Jesus changes our lives, and today we're going to talk about how Jesus heals us. Last week we talked about the sons of thunder. One of them was John. He went from a son of thunder and was changed into an apostle of love. And then he writes the story that we're going to look at today. In John chapter 5, Jesus goes to a pool called Bethsaida, and he meets a man that had been there for a long time, almost four decades. That's a long time. And... Uh, Interesting, you may or may not know this, but of all the miracles and healings that Jesus did, he only did two, three if you count the resurrection, but only two he miracle healings in the city of Jerusalem and in that area. This is one of them that we'll look at today because Jesus is a healer. He, he heals. And this man that was sitting there had been there for a long time, and he was looking for healing. He'd gone to this place that was known for healing. In fact, the history of this pool was deep, long, and not very biblical. The Greeks used it as a healing area. The Romans came in and made it into a healing area, and they would have what they called their spirits. In fact, one book I read said they were spirits of serpents that stirred up the water. Just telling you, it was... It, it, and Jesus goes to this place and he finds this man who's there with many people looking for healing. And it's very interesting to me that of all the people at the pool there, only one received healing. I want you to know that if you're in this room today, the healer is present in this room. And healing could be your portion. And let me make this statement. Y'all, y'all need healing. You may say, but I'm feeling good. I want to talk today about Jesus' healing of body, soul, and spirit. And there's one of those healings that you need in your life. This man came looking for healing, and I want you to look with me at a clip from The Chosen as Jesus enters into the city of Jerusalem. John chapter 5 says he was entering for one of the festivals. There were three festivals that all Jews were under an obligation to attend, to go to Jerusalem. Passover, weeks, or the Festival of Weeks, and the Festival of Tabernacles. And there's debate which one this was. Some people think it was Passover, and some people think it was Tabernacle. But Jesus was going as a good Jewish boy, which he was. He went to the city to celebrate, but he went for a greater purpose. He had this man in mind when he entered the city. When you got up this morning, Jesus had you on his mind. Amen. Jesus knew you'd be here, and he has something that he'd like to do in your life, just like 
this man. So there's a couple of things I'd like you to recognize from this clip. One is the discussion that the disciples have as they enter into Jerusalem about this healing place of Bethsaida that had some pagan roots to it. And the second is, as Jesus enters the city of Jerusalem, he passes by crosses. Crosses were a all too common form of execution for the Romans. And when they crucified, they liked to crucify on the main entry roads so they would show the population, we are in charge. And we have the power to take life. And so they displayed their crosses on the entryway. And it's very sure that as Jesus entered into the Jeru entered Jerusalem, he would have passed by crosses knowing that one day he would give his life for you and me on a cross because that was his destiny. Both of those things are in this clip. Watch as Jesus and his friends enter into the city of Jerusalem with a divine purpose to bring healing. So this person you need to see, we get to meet him in the temple? No, actually the opposite, the Bethesda pool. Oh, really? Here we go again. It's stranger and stranger with you, doesn't it? I love it. Why is it strange? Because the history of the pool is pagan. I don't know much about the details. Um, James usually knows that stuff more, but... Um... The pool used to be a shrine for the Phoenician god... Uh... Epim? Eshmoon. Esh? Esh Eshmoon, right, right. And then the Greeks and the Romans turned it into a place of worship for a healing cult of Aesculapius. Very good, Simon. How do you know this stuff? And James isn't the only one who reads. John, you should try it. <laughs> I do know about the pools, though. Every day the water steams and bubbles, and some people believe that it's stirred up by an angel who heals the first person who gets to the stirred water. I've read about this, that there are places on Earth where hot vapor steams up from the ground intermittently or makes water boil, and no one knows how. Uh, I wouldn't say no one. Is that why we're going? You're going to tell us? Someday someone will figure it out, and they'll tell everybody. But for now, we have a checkpoint to pass. Everyone behave yourselves. So Jesus enters into the city to meet with a man who is looking for healing. It's interesting that only one man received healing. Both miracles that Jesus did in Jerusalem, he did beside water. The pool of Bethesda, a lame man, which we'll talk about today, and the pool of Siloam, a blind man. Could it be that Jesus was trying to communicate a message that he spoke publicly that I am the living water? That when you come to me, you truly find healing. And could it be that so many people were distracted by the pool of Bethsaida because they were looking at the water, waiting for a ripple, that they missed the living water who could have healed them right standing there? I don't want you to be in this room and miss out. Don't look at me. Don't look at this church. Find Jesus and you will find your healer. If you're looking for healing, you've come to the right place because we're all about Jesus. And some of you have prayed for healing. And this man prayed for healing for how many years? 38 years, almost 40 years. He had tried to get into that water. And he had lost hope. We know when we read the story and Jesus asked him, do you want to be healed? The man doesn't immediately say, yes. He starts to make conversation about people who let him down and people that cut him off. He had become hopeless. And it could be that you're here and you've been praying for healing for a while. Maybe chronic pain has set in and that can be debilitating. I want you to know that Jesus is a healer. And even if you've lost hope, I would just pray today your hope would be stirred up to one more time look to Jesus as the healer. I want you to see a little clip from this man who tried to get into the water so many times and never made it because... He was crippled, no one could lift him in, and other people were faster than he was. Watch the man as he tries to get into the water at the pool of Bethsaida.
Are you okay, Jesse? Uh huh. You're moving from the edge. There's no point. It was a dumb idea. You're not going to try anymore. No, Jesse. If you don't have any hope, then why are you still here? You don't have any hope. He lost hope. And you could be here. Chronic pain, suffering. And we're talking about healing and you're going, uh, I prayed once. Someone laid hands on me. I prayed and nothing happened. And I feel like I've lost hope. Well, we just want to talk to you briefly about this fact from the scriptures that Jesus is a healer. In the scriptures, he was a healer, and he's present in this room, and he is still a healer. And there are three places that he would like to heal your life. Physical is one of them. Your body is one of them. Even more importantly, your soul. And even more importantly than that, your spirit. So let's look at the healing ministry of Jesus. Let's talk about, in this story, of course, Jesus heals the body of this man, 38 years of not walking, and suddenly he stands up. There had to be a miracle of strength going into his legs. And then if you haven't used your legs for 38 years, that's a miracle in itself because the muscles would have atrophied. Jesus, I think, had to create some muscles in there. And then to just remember how to stand up after 38 years must have been a miracle. Jesus is a hero physically, and the prophets said he would be. Isaiah, in Isaiah 53, as he's hundreds of years before Jesus, says that Jesus will bring healing to us by his work on the cross. Here's what Isaiah the prophet says about Jesus long before Jesus was even born, that he was pierced for our transgressions. Doesn't that sound like the cross? He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds... We are healed. Now, does that include physical healing? Yes, it does. In Matthew chapter 8, where Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law physically because they need a dinner. You know that story. Here's what happened. They came to the house and they said, hey, who's they, my mother-in-law is sick. She can't help us. And Jesus, bring her over. We'll heal her up. She had a fever. And Jesus healed her physically. And then many people heard about that healing and they came and how many of them were healed? All of them were healed. And the record, Matthew, knows that this physical healing in Matthew 8 is tied to the prophecy of Isaiah hundreds of years before because he quotes Isaiah and says this is to fulfill that Jesus would take our illnesses and take our diseases away. So Jesus is a healer physically. And then Peter, who writes to us in 1 Peter, remember it was Peter's mother-in-law that was healed in Matthew chapter 8, he writes to us and he says, from the words of Isaiah, he bore our sins in his body on the tree, that's what Jesus did on the cross, that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. And then he quotes this, by his wounds you have been healed. It's actually past tense. Here's what happened. Isaiah is looking forward to the cross and Peter is looking back to the cross, and they, from the cross flows healing power. And when we look at the life of Jesus, we see him healing many people. And this is a beautiful clip from this uh, uh, part of, the, of the, the chosen. I want you to see as Jesus encounters this man and how he heals him. The story's in John chapter 5. Here it is from the chosen, season 2. This is what all the fuss is about. An oversized maker. I have a feeling we haven't seen it all yet. That's him. been here the longest, but doesn't belong, the sad one, 
Why do I get the feeling this isn't just a meeting? Do we need to be on the lookout? No. Now stay with me and watch. Shalom. Me? Yes. Shalom. I have a question for you. For me. I don't have many answers, but I'm listening. Do you want to be healed? Who are you? We'll get to that later. But my question remains. Will you take me to the water? <laughs> Look, I'm having a really bad day. You've been having a bad day for a long time. So? Sir, I have no one to help me into the water when it's stirred up. And when I do get close, the others step down in front of me. And so, That's not what I asked. I'm not asking you about who's helping you, or who's not helping, or who's getting in your way. I'm asking about you. <laughs> I've tried. For a long time. hope again, I understand. But this pool, it has nothing for you. It means nothing. And you know it. But you're still here. Why? I don't know. You don't need this pool. He said, don't forget your bed. Why does this matter? Because you're not coming back here. That life is over. Everything changes now. Oh, come on.
I like to read stories like that before I pray for someone to be healed. I like to pray for healing with full faith and full confidence in the healing power of Jesus Christ. And have I seen miraculous healings take place? Absolutely. I've seen blind eyes open up. I've seen ears open up. But every time I hear pray a healing prayer, every time I pray a healing prayer, I have 100% success. Well, sooner or later. Here's a mystery to healing that I want to just briefly address. And there's a verse that Paul says that gives me insight. It says, I want to know Christ. This is the, this is the end goal of healing, to know Christ. I love in this clip where he says, look at me. Look at me. Because I think the other people were distracted looking at the water and they missed what Jesus was doing over here in the corner because they were distracted. If they had looked to Jesus, I believe there would have been greater healings. Because there's times Jesus, we just read it, healed them all. So I think I'm not as sure exactly what happened, but look at me. And when I pray, I love to know Christ. I love the power of his resurrection. I love when the miracle takes place right away. That's, it's dramatic, it's beautiful, and when I pray, I always pray for that to happen. But in my life, some healings come later. My mother went through a health issue. We prayed, God restored her through medicine and prayer. Thanks be to God, we had her for many years. She got the same kind of sickness. We prayed again, she went to heaven. She's doing good. I will tell you that in heaven, it's 100%. I, I will tell you, I just tell you, if, you, if you're, watch this, if you're in what Paul calls the fellowship of suffering, and this is a mystery. This is a mystery. I, I don't understand everything about healing. I just want to encourage you when you pray, pray with full faith. But if it's a later, there is a mystery to the fellowship of suffering that's real. And the question is, when you go through the fellowship of suffering, when the legs don't work right away, when the eyes don't open up right away, when the pain is still there after you pray, and you say, but I'm still suffering, the goal is to know him. And in the midst of it, to ask God, how can I know Christ in the power of resurrection? Praise be to God. But in the fellowship of suffering. And I just want to encourage you, as you pray for healing prayers, remember stories like John 5, where Jesus said, 38 years you've been waiting. Do you want to be healed? And the answer is yes. And you pray with full faith. But even more important than physical healing is this. Jesus wants to heal your soul. This is a healing that almost everyone, well, I would say not almost. I'm going to, I'm going to just say everyone. Because your soul is not perfect yet. At least, I haven't met any of you that have reached that. If you're out there, let me know after the service. Your, your soul has three components. Your soul is who you really are. It's how you think, it's how you feel, and it's the choices you make. You do not have a soul, you actually are a soul. You have a body, but you are a soul. And your soul needs some work. Well, the scripture points out that it does. Here's a verse that we read in 1 Peter, again writing on healing. Having your souls purified, that means getting better, this healing of the soul, because actually your soul needs to be purified. Because not every thought you have thought, not every emotion you've had, and not every action you've taken in the last two days has been 100%. He says, so I want you to have a soul purified through truth, uh, the way you think, through love, oh, the emotions you have and through a pure heart, the actions you take. So here are some questions. If you are working on soul care and soul healing, here's three questions I'd like you to ask this morning about your own life. What are you thinking about? What, what has been taking your attention in the last seven days? What has taken your attention? And are you allowing the Spirit of God and the Word of God to renew your mind? I would say to you, if you think better, you actually could feel better. Here's another question. What are you feeling? What are the primary emotions of your life? Let me give you the ones that God would like them to be. I'll give you three primary emotions that God would like you to enjoy. You ready? He would like you to have love, joy, and peace. 
Those are three primary emotions that God would like to predominate your soul. So if it's not joy, but it's something else, if it's not peace, but something else, God would like to heal your soul. He'd like to give you peace, not like the world gives peace. He'd like to settle your troubled soul. He'd like to take away your fears and your anxiety and heal your soul. So ask yourself, what have I been feeling lately? And the third thing, what are you doing? Because you are directed in your life, your soul is directed by what you think and what you feel. It's motivating your actions and where you're going. And God would like you to go better places, accomplish better things. And so he says in Philippians, God wants to work in you to do what? To affect your will and your action to fulfill his good purpose. So what have you been thinking about? What have you been feeling? And what in the world have you been doing? Does your soul need some help? Mm, two people. Mm. Lord, I just want to pray for honesty now in people's souls. Like, it's uh, just honesty. Well, here's a prayer. Here's a prayer you can pray. I, I, this is a great prayer. I pray that you may prosper. I pray that prayer for you. Not one amen in the house, but I still pray it anyway. Don't you want your pastor to pray that you prosper? I, I pray that this is, this is John. He's praying for his friend. So I pray for you. I pray that you would prosper. And if you don't like me praying for you, please pray this prayer for me. In all things. So you would have good health. As your soul has good health. If your soul has good health, it will actually affect your physical health. Science knows that. Medicine knows that. That your thinking, your emotions, and the decision you make is affecting the way that you have health in your soul. So here's a good prayer. I pray that your soul would be whole and healthy and healed and that you would prosper in everything. That's good healing. And there's every one of us that could do that. Let me talk about this one briefly and then we'll pray. This is the greatest healing. This is your spirit. This is the most important part of your life. It's not physical, it's spiritual. Your spirit is the part of you that draws you towards God. It's the thing that God awakens when you receive Christ. It's your heart of hearts. We talk about opening our heart and accepting Christ. We actually are opening our spirit, that part that's drawn to God. And God would like to give your spirit life. He said it to Nicodemus, to have a born again experience. Here's what he says. God does give you a spirit. He wants to heal your spirit and he wants to take away fear, anxiety. He doesn't give you that kind of spirit. When he awakens your spirit, when he heals your spirit, it's a spirit of power and love and of a sound mind. And can you see this? The way you think, the way you feel, and the choices you make. When your spirit is right, it actually brings healing to your soul. So stop letting the world influence your soul and let Jesus, the healer, influence your soul and your world will be so much better. Here's another prayer you can pray from Thessalonians. I pray, here's Paul praying, that God who gives you peace, that shalom in your soul, will make you completely holy and, and holy, sometimes, what is holy? Holy is whole. It's when all the parts of you are integrated. That's true holiness. Not what you wear at your hair or if you have a tattoo. That's not holiness. <laughs> Some of you are still on my wavelength there. Some of you are not. That's not hol Real holiness is that you would be holy in what areas? In your spirit. Drawn to God. It's your spirit when you come into this place that longs for the presence of God. It's the spirit inside of you that doesn't want to just sing songs, but wants to encounter God. That's the spirit inside of you. And when your spirit is alive, it longs for the presence of God. And when that is right, then it helps your soul to be whole, the way you think, the way you feel, and the choices you make. And then even your bodies can enjoy good health. Because Jesus heals us. You are a tri-dimensional being. 
body, soul, and spirit. And Jesus, the healer, oh, yes, he heals lame people who happen to be by the pool. That's important. But even more important, the soul. Because what does it profit? A man or a woman, if they have all the health in the world, but lose their own soul. So the soul is more important than the physical being. And more important than the soul is your spirit, that connection with God. So in a moment, we're going to pray. We're going to open our heart or our spirit, and we're going to invite Christ to receive Christ, some for the first time, some for the first time in a long time, but to receive his spirit as we turn towards God and receive grace. And then we want to pray for healing as well in this place. So two things we're going to pray for. Let's close our eyes for this moment of prayer. Let me invite you to open your heart. Know that Jesus is in the house. He's here right now. He's knocking at your heart's door. And what we're doing now is opening our heart, our spirit, to Jesus. And we do it out loud because the Bible says, believe in your heart, absolutely, quietly, but open your mouth and confess out loud. And so here's a prayer I'm going to ask everyone to pray it with me. All the people around you should be able to hear your voice as you lift your voice and say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name because I really need you. I repent of my sins. I leave them behind. And I turn towards you, Lord, to receive your love, your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness. Thank you for loving me and never giving up on me. Now fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to follow Jesus every day of my life. Amen. That's a great, that's the greatest prayer. That's the greatest healing. When that goes on, in a moment we're gonna be baptizing people who have turned towards God and said yes. And we're gonna celebrate their life in God. But Jesus also wants to heal your soul and heal your body. And so I'm just going to ask those, and there's many here, that say, you know, I would like to receive healing grace today, physically. I'd like to receive healing grace. My soul has some issues I would like to bring before the Lord and ask him to purify my soul, to make my soul more holy. And I'm not going to embarrass you or ask you to come forward. I'm just going to ask you in this moment to stand in the place that you are for healing and just say, I am being asked the question by Jesus that was asked in John 5, do you want to be healed? And my answer is yes, yes. And so just stand where you are. We're going to pray right where you are for healing. Go ahead. Many people, that's okay. And if there's somebody close by you or a prayer minister, go put a hand on someone and pray with them and for them. That's beautiful as well. Or look around and if you see somebody and, and you just want to minister to them, for, uh, here's, it's not hard to pray for healing. Just say, Jesus, I just pray you will bring healing grace to them. Thank you for reaching out. Thank you. Thank you. And Lord, here are your children, your sons and your daughters. You love them. You knew they'd be here this morning. And Lord, we pray for the healing grace of Jesus. We pray against cancer. We pray every cell of your being would be made whole in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray today for a miracle that brings a cessation to chronic pain. We pray that Jesus who spoke to this man at the poolside would speak and say, be gone pain in the name of Jesus. We pray for internal organs, the heart and the lungs and the liver and the digestive system, all working in divine order is our prayer, God. We pray for the skeletal structure and for the back especially, those that need healing in their back and pain. We pray for healing. Arthritis must go in Jesus' name. We pray with full faith and confidence. And then our souls, God. We bring our souls before you. Help us to think better. Help us to have the mind of Christ. Put on our head the, the, the helmet of salvation. May we have saved thoughts 
and the breastplate of righteousness that guards our emotions. Help us, Lord, to take the actions and the steps and to walk in peace for the places we go and the things we do. Heal our soul as well. And thank you that you are healing spirits and we celebrate with those who will be baptized in a moment. We pray the blessing of the Lord to be with you and you are very blessed.